Hi, this is Bob McLeod, best-selling author of Embrace the Chaos. Today, I'm going to talk to you about an article that I read and share with you a message about growth. It's an article from the 1950s, I think it was 1954, called Marketing Myopia by Theodore Levitt. It was in the Harvard Business Review and uh, it was very instrumental. It became one of those articles that really took a hold among leaders and in industries and management. Uh, Peter Drucker quoted from it and his famous line of what business are you in came or I believe came from this article. I read through this 30 page article uh, to share with you some strategies on how to grow. That's really my point is to share with you some strategies on how to change and how do you grow in this new disruptive environment that we live in today. So marketing myopia became famous for uh, Theodore Levitt talked about a number of different things. I'm just going to go through some of those things and share with you That's and why this is relevant for you if you're in business today. It's called Marketing Myopia and the central premise of Levitt's piece in Harvard Business Review is that growth is threatened not because the market is saturated but because management failed. Management he claimed failed in a number of different industries he's, he points out in those days and we could talk about these days as well but management failed to change and adapt to the new environment that they were living in today because fundamentally he claims that they didn't they failed to ask the right question and the question was not how do we sell more products but what industry are we really in he gave the example of the railroad industry. No one talks about the railroad industry today. I know, but I want to share with you why it's relevant. So railroad, industry railroad. management claimed that they were in the business of rails, of the railroad business. But had they thought, had they realized that they were actually in the transportation business, they would have been able to grow. Why? Because then they would have gotten into cars, buses, trucks and other modes of transportation. And so he's suggesting we careful that, that management is often failing to realize the business that they're in. Example today, and Barry Diller coined, he said this phrase, he said, Hollywood today is irrelevant. And she said, what do you mean? She said, well, you know, if you thought about it, some years ago, there were basically seven or eight studio executives who gathered around a table and decided what movies you and I were going to watch. Well today they're completely irrelevant because we watch entertainment from YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, all these other, Amazon and so on and so forth. So the question that Hollywood talked about or, thought, or should have been asking themselves is what business are we in? Instead of saying we're in the films business or movie business, we're in the entertainment business. And that looks very different. Really be vigilant about asking yourself what business are you in. So I'm just going to read some of these quick, quick bullet points. And so what he suggests is that we have this myopia of marketing that we focus, and that's the second point. We have marketing myopia, product myopia. We're so focused on our own product that we neglect to focus on the customer. Let me repeat that, and this is very important. This is a principal, principal thesis of marketing myopia and why organizations, I believe, are not growing today. It's because they're so focused. And again, Theodore Lever talked about, Levitt talks about, you know, the fact that there's a product orientation, and that is what management fails to do is to get to a customer orientation. You know, we talked about companies improperly defining their purpose earlier, but this is really about the fact that you become obsolete when you focus on production, you focus on your product, you focus on efficiencies, economies of scale, you focus on what your product looks like and making your product better. Instead of doing that, we ought to focus on the customer and the changing needs of the customer and filling those needs. You know, Amazon is the company that does this better than anybody else. They don't care what business they're in. The business that they're in is the business to satisfy a customer. And yes, it means you might have to expand a little bit your core 
to other things. Amazon, you know, cloud is a wonderful example of a business that Amazon got into uh, instead of just shipping products to consumers. And that cloud business that, uh, you know, AWS is now is a $30 billion business, I understand, from Amazon. The point is, look, and, and Jeff Bezos says this really well, is that, you know, we don't really care as much about, you know, our competitors and staying ahead of our competition. Uh, because if you're good and you're number one, well then what do you do? What do you reference? And so we're really obsessed about the customer. And I think this article speaks to that, is that we fail when we focus so much on our product and trying to make our product better that we neglect to look at the changing needs of the customer and responding and filling that need. And when you're focusing on the customer, and the customer is always moving, yeah, the customer is always moving here and there. It keeps you vigilant. And so what Theodore Levitt says here is that you can be successful by having a focus, a vigilance towards what the customer wants, not looking so much at your product. So let me just go through some of these quickly. You know, there's a lack of imagination and audacity with, with leaders in business, you know, Theodore Levitt talks about, talks about the fact that, you know, there's a self-deception that companies and leaders often have is that we're pretty good, we've got a great market position, you know, we're fine, we're just going to continue to grow at whatever percent, you know, you're going to grow at. And he says that, you know, that's a bad idea. That self-deception of not reinventing yourself and disrupting yourself and changing yourself all the time leads to failure because eventually technology is coming to the market that's going to disrupt your business and get you out of business. And he says that there's no such thing, and I love this quote, there's no such thing as a growth industry. Only companies organized and operated to create and capitalize on growth opportunities. There's no such thing as a growth industry. Only companies organized to capture growth opportunities. And that really goes back to my point I made earlier, I make you know, a lot, is that we're living in such an environment that's just so changing so fast, we have to adapt and we have to change. We have to have that white, clean sheet of you know, paper mindset of we're going to adapt and we're not going to be any one thing, but we're going to try to be whatever the customer needs. And yes, you're going to change. That means you're going to change constantly because the customer needs are changing constantly. And then he talks about the fact that, you know, history of every, uh, 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 of every dying, you know, in growth industry shows a self-deceiving cycle of bountiful expansion and undetected decay. Undetected decay. And so what happens is often is, and what he claims is that organizations, management, get lazy. They get lazy. They don't have that sense of urgency to constantly innovate, to constantly grow, trying to figure out which way the customer is moving and try to adapt. And that decay comes from the self-deception of not taking action. So let me summarize. And fundamentally, I think the principles are two things. You know, the first is, instead of having a product orientation, have a customer orientation. Always try to focus on what the customer is, and then you can respond and move around with the customer needs. Then you change, right? If you focus so much on your product, all you're doing is making your product better and better. And But what happens, and that's fine for a little while, but what happens? Competition always catches up to better product, or a technology comes in that disrupts your market. So that's the first thing is really have, instead of a product orientation, a customer orientation. And that means understanding what the customer needs all the time, finding new customers, finding new opportunities, and then working very hard to fill those opportunities. That's the first thing. The second is ego, self-deception. That is what leads to decay. If you believe you're in a fundamentally superior product, some superior position in the marketplace, and you think that's okay and you're going to be fine for a while, you're mistaken because something always comes up that destroys and disrupts your business. And we see it largely today with everything because it's so easy to come to a market with a new product. It really has become so much easier. There's a lot of funding available for startups and so on and so forth. So fundamentally, I believe if you want to grow, we've got to change the way we think, the way we act, and 
focusing not on us, not on ourselves, but on other people. And those people are our customers, and the customers we don't have, focusing on the marketplace. That's really the core thing, I think, to help you grow your business. This is Bob Miglani, wishing you great success and happiness in your life. Take care. Have a great day.